Hello everyone. My name is Aslam Mojalal and in this session we are going to look at ETAP's PPC solution for power plant controllers with multiple points of interconnection or POIs to the grid. This is a novel, comprehensive and interesting solution that is achievable because of the way that ETAP ePPC is designed. We will get into the features that set ePPC apart from other solutions later in this session. During this session, we will have a quick overview of the power plant controller and we'll discuss what are the roles and responsibilities of this controller. Then we will look at conventional power plants with single POI and discuss their limitation and why the multi-POI power plants are more appealing. After that, we will look at the multi-POI power plants we will see that controlling such systems is more challenging because of the change in the configuration of the plant and that PPC needs to adapt to these changes and modifications. Next, we will look at ePPC solution and discuss why our solution is suitable for controlling such systems. Then we will take a look at the test case where ePPC controls a hybrid multi-POI power plant in simulation environment and finally, we use ETAP as real-time simulator to run a hardware-in-the-loop test. First, let's talk about power plant controller and its role in a power plant. Typically, the power plant controller is a master controller that is designed to dispatch the generating units. The objective of PPC is to regulate the active and reactive power at the point of interconnection, generally based on the commands coming from the operator of the plant or system. PPCs can also do other functionalities, such as controlling the voltage power factor, participating in group-based control, renewable smoothing, and so on, depending on the need of the plant and the operator. Finally, the plant may be a hybrid plant with different types of active and reactive power resources, which PPC should be able to regulate. In power plants with a single point of interconnection, the power voltage and other variables are measured at the POI and from other assets, as you can see here. Then PPC uses these measurements to fulfill the command of the operator by either increasing or decreasing the reactive and active power of the generating units. The internal logic of PPC is usually more complicated that, than what is shown here, for example, a ramp rate limiter might be used to control the power at the point of interconnection or the generating units might be dispatched based on the priority list. However, ultimately power plant controller controls variables at the point of interconnection. In a multi-POI power plant, however, this is not the case anymore. In such systems, PPC controls multiple points of interconnection as seen here. This means that PPC should have an understanding of the structure and configuration of the plant in order to correlate each asset with its associated point of interconnection. In reality, PPC should control multiple zones or power plant where the layout and connection of each of the elements matters and should be known to PPC. Also in large systems to increase reliability, these power plants or zones are interconnected with each other through coupling breakers. In normal conditions, these breakers are open and each zone operates as an independent entity. However, the configuration ch can change on the fly and in the real-time operation of the plant. This allows the power plant to generate power even if one of the points of interconnection is lost, let's say due to a fault or other disturbances. For example, in this system, assume that due to a fault, breaker at the point of interconnection one opens. To maintain uninterrupted power generation, the coupling breaker is closed in this scenario. This action ensures that the power flow is seamlessly transferred and that the power generation process to the grid is continued without any interruptions. As you can see by the dashed line, in this case, the configuration of the power plant that PPC controls changes and zone one is merged into zone two. So instead of controlling two independent plants, now PPC is controlling a larger plant and it should adapt to it on the fly. And this is the biggest challenge when it comes to controlling multi-POI plants. 
Now let's take a look at ETAP EPPC solution and see what makes it a suitable candidate for dealing with multi-PoI power plants. First of all, EPPC is a hybrid solution that is capable of working with different types of generating units. Also, EPPC works very well with ETAP SCADA solution, which makes it a complete and comprehensive solution for control of power plants. ETAP PPC is also a model-driven solution. This is a key feature of EPPC when it comes to controlling multi-PUI systems. EPPC is also a model-driven solution. This is a key feature of EPPC when it comes to controlling multi-PUI systems. Since as a model-driven solution, the model of the power plant is known to EPPC, it can deal with the changes in the configuration very well. This feature sets EPPC apart from other PLC-based solutions. Also, since RPPC is a software-based controller, more advanced functions can be implemented based on the need of the client. Another very important feature of EPPC is the existence of its identical digital twin in ETAP that can be used to perform testing and validating the logic before implementing it in the field. And this makes the testing procedure very easy. Now, let's go to ETAP environment to take a look at the performance of EPPC with multi-POI power plants. Okay. Now let's take a look at ETAP model that I have prepared for this session. On left, we have zone one or power plant one, which is shown in blue. And it is a hybrid power plant that has some WTGs, a STATCOM, a battery storage system, and the number of PVs. And we have a similar power plant shown in red on the right, which again is a hybrid power plant with WTGs, PVs, energy storage, and a STATCOM. The task of the power plant controller here is to regulate the power flowing through the points of interconnection for these two power systems by dispatching the assets in each power plant. As discussed previously, power plant controller can do this by controlling each zone or power plant as an independent entity. And this is possible because in normal condition, this coupling breaker in between is open. Okay, let's first take a look at the gateway, which mimics the behavior of the operator of the system for us. If I come to the DLL page and go to the schedule command, we can see that we have some settings that these settings are basically the commands that operator is sending to the PPC and PPC should make sure that the power flowing through the point of interconnection follows these commands. Okay, now let's go to the power plant controller itself. The first thing that I want to mention is the associated devices. As you can see here, all of the elements within both of these zones are being controlled by the same power plant controller. The next thing that I want to mention is that in the power plant controller, we can have some more advanced functionalities, such as having a dispatch priority for active power control or dispatch priority for reactive power control in each zone, or we can have a special logics, droop control, and so on and so forth. And this is all possible because of the software-based nature of EPPC that enables us to introduce and implement more advanced functions inside EPPC. Okay, the first scenario that I want to run is when these two systems are independent of each other and are not merged together. So if I run the simulation and plot the active power at the point of interconnection for these two zones, we can see that the results are identical. This is because we have two identical systems which are generating same amount of power to fulfill the operator command. Keep in mind that if the rating of these two zones were different, then PPC could have been programmed to generate same amount of power from each zone or distribute power between these two zones based on their rating. A few things that I need to mention about these results are that here we can see, for example, the impact of ramp rate limiter, and this can be defined through EPPC settings or by commands from the operator of the system. 
Also, the commands that were received from the operator were 20 megawatt, 25 megawatt, and 15 megawatt respectively. That's why here we see at the beginning that each zone is generating 10 megawatt for a total of 20, and then 12 and a half megawatt, and finally 7 and a half megawatt. Also, if we look at the power among assets in, let's say, zone one, we see that since PV has a higher priority than WTG, if we want to curtail power, we first curtail WTG and then start to curtail PV. On the other hand, if we want to increase the power, we first increase the generation of PV, and if the generation and capacity of PV is not enough, then we utilize the WTG. Now let's take a look at a scenario where the configuration changes on the fly and zone one merges into zone two. In this scenario, I have an event at t equal 10 seconds that merges zone one into zone two. To do so, the main breaker at PI1 opens and the coupling breaker closes. Due to this event, the power of zone one is transferred to the grid through PI2 and PPC ensures that the operation of the power plant is uninterrupted. Okay, if you run the simulation and take a look at the power at the point of interconnection, We see that the first 10 seconds of the simulation is similar to the previous study. However, at t equal 10 seconds, the power flowing through PI1 goes to zero, and instead the entire power goes through PI2. In this case, EPPC ensures that the assets in zone one still contribute to the overall generation of the plant. And from the perspective of EPPC, zone one and zone two are merged into a larger power plant. One more thing that I need to mention is that at this point, the coupling breaker is closed and the breaker at POI one is open. That is why we uh, have a jump in the power at the POI two. Okay, now let's get to the final part of this session, which is the hardware in the loop test. So far, we saw the result in ETAP environment. However, ETAP can be used as a real-time simulator and simulate the behavior of power plant. With this capability, we can deploy the logic inside the actual EPPC hardware and establish a communication between the hardware and ETAP software. This gives us the flexibility to test our logic and our hardware in HIL test, which makes the process of testing and debugging very easy and inexpensive. Coming back to ETAP, we can see that the process of deploying is very simple and straightforward. First, I need to put the controller in HIL test mode from the DLL page. Then if I go to associated devices page, we have this deploy button down here that if I press this button, ETAP creates an identical digital twin of the logic from the software side for us that can be uploaded in ETAP hardware. If I press this open file location, it takes me to the place that this file is created, this controller deploy.mgc. The next step is to upload this deploy logic inside ePPC hardware. To do so, we need to come to ePPC web client, which is the interface of ePPC. Press this upload button and select the logic, press upload. It takes a while, but the logic is right now getting uploaded in ePPC hardware. And there we go. The logic is successfully uploaded in ePPC hardware. The next step is to open Data Hub, which acts as a communication bridge between ETAP software and ePPC hardware. Now we can simply run ETAP as real-time simulator and let ePPC hardware control the power plant. And that is how the HIL test can be done.
One last thing that I need to mention is the capability that EPPC Web Client provides in regards with real-time monitoring of the results and the performance of the controller, as well as changing the settings of EPPC. The first feature is that the settings of the EPPC can be seen, imported, exported, or changed by the user during real-time operation of the system. Here in the settings page, the latest settings of EPPC are shown and they can be changed according to the user's requirement. Also, the real-time input values, outputs, diagnostics, and other results and performance metrics can be monitored through web client. On top of this, since ETAP is being used as the real-time simulator, all of the measurements that are being used in this HIL test are stored in ETAP once the simulation is finished and can be reviewed. And with that, I would like to conclude this presentation. Thank you for your attention and have a great day.